Welcome back, everybody, to our next episode in this multiplayer mega playthrough on Hearts of Iron 4. And this could be the episode where it all goes down. There's been a lot going on behind the scenes since the last episode. If you didn't see the first several episodes, there's a link in the description that will take you back to episode one. Here's who we have playing today. We have me as Germany, random British guy is the Brits. Grumblebee is the USSR. Wise guy is Italy. Lieutenant Rixus is Brazil. Insane is Japan. USS Torsk is the United States. Santis as uh, Manchuco. We have Grand Borg as uh, Imperialist Canada. He was France, but he's jumped back in as Imperialist Canada. And Godly Beep is Peru. He's still loading up. Uh, there's been a lot going on behind the scenes. If you saw the last episode, you know at the very end, uh, at the end of the peace conference where everything got divided up, uh, Great Britain really angered pretty much everybody by uh, freeing Norway from Finland. And there was a lot of uh, people talking as though they were going to go to war with Britain. I think we're tempering that a bit just because there's a bit of fear, at least on my part, that while our back is turned and we're dealing with Britain, that that might be the time that Grumblebee as the Soviet Union decides to strike. And I'm not ready or willing for that to happen. Uh, so there's a lot of talk behind the scenes as to what's going on. A lot of people are offering alliances and offering promises. I don't know what to believe and what not to believe. So I honestly have no idea what's going to happen in this episode, but let's dive in. All right, so we ended last episode with all of that mess of kind of gathering everything. So I've got new territories and places that I've got to kind of deal with. Uh, and as always, I'm not real anxious to get involved in war at the moment, as I very much just want to make sure that I have all of my units as prepared as possible for what may be coming so i think we need we need some motorized equipment I, I really don't want motorized i really just want to switch everything over to mechanized but i don't quite have the army experience to do that right now so i think i'm just going to chill from creating those until i can replace them uh, but otherwise my main concern of course right now is the soviet union and uh, so I want to make sure that I've got not only a good defense here, which I, I, I do have, I also need to make sure I've got strong air power and a strong naval defense along this long coast that I have. All right, Great Britain have dismantled their faction. They have decided to stand alone for now. And the United States has offered us not only a non-aggression pact, but uh, access uh, to their territory. So they're obviously making overtures toward peace. And now they're trying to negotiate production licenses, which I guess I'll be okay with for now. Call to arms. From the, uh, we're going to get this every so often, these call to arms. I'm actually just going to do nothing with them. They'll go away on their own. But there is still a war going on, and you can see that here. Mainly against the United States, Costa Rica, Panama, Mexico, Nicaragua, places like that. So you can see how many uh, military factories we currently have queued up. We have five at any given time. Uh, so we're going to be constantly spamming out five military factories every so often. Uh, and then I'm going to actually start working on a few more naval dockyards. Because I'd like to be able to ramp up my U-boat production a little bit. And that'll, be, that'll allow me to do that. I'm also continuing to work on a, a large number of fighters. I've got 3 million in available manpower, so I'm going to continue to make as many divisions as I possibly can, which right now uh, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 infantry divisions plus one panzer division queued up at any given time. And the main reason for the infantry is that I want to use them primarily to defend my borders, whereas my Continued production of panzers will be any attack force that I need to use or try to break through somewhere. So Hirohito hereby announces we have returned Alaska to the American people as compensation. So the United States is going to be joining our efforts in whatever we decide to do. I think he's going to try to join the Axis. Uh, so you can see Alaska has been returned, as has Los Angeles. Uh, and he's going to try to help out with the situation uh, particularly, I think, in South America, where we're trying to finish up what's left of this war, these wars that are going on. Uh, there's one against Nicaragua and nationalist South Africa that has to be dealt with. And then the other one is the German-Mexican War, uh, which is funny because I don't remember ever being against Mexico in a war, but that's how that goes. 
So I'm just checking out what the Soviet Union's up to, and he's actually not doing any of his national focus right now. He's on suppress subjects. So he's trying to bring down the autonomy in the subject nations that he controls at the moment. So that's kind of all that's going on there, which is good. That means he's not actively trying to do anything against us. Uh, everybody else has been fairly quiet. I think we're just trying to deal with the existing wars, which means taking out South America, or uh, South Africa, as well as Nicaragua. We're freeing up some more military slots here. Uh, and then I want to look at land doctrine. Brazil declared war on Brazil. I think he's doing a fascist coup, I would guess, is what's happening there. So let's ramp up our artillery production. We haven't really done a lot of good research on artillery. Um, we could do the anti-Soviet pact. But we're not going to go as far as war with the USSR. Another thing I'm, I'm doing is I'm continuing to pump out divisions for defense. And here's where we're at right now. We're, we're caught up on medium tanks. So right now what I'm doing is I'm upgrading to the Panzer 4As. But I, I do have production issues elsewhere. Mechanized equipment, uh, towed artillery, support equipment, fighters, close air support. So what I'm doing now is I'm looking at all of my infrastructure and I'm looking at the places where I'm producing a lot. And that's where I'm going to max out my infrastructure because that's going to add to my production capabilities in those places. And the more I produce, the less I have to trade for. Uh, so that frees up my factories to do what I want them to do instead of focusing on what other people are doing. Oil is definitely a big deal for us. So anywhere we can get more of that is good. And I'm probably going to start ramping up doing some synthetic refineries. I just got to find some places that I can build those. So there's a lot I want to do internally. Non-aggression pact from Cuba, sure, why not? And one from Norway as well. Soviet Union declared war on communist China. Okay, so that's where he's going. That's the next step for him. He's going to gobble up communist China right here. Okay, so Panama has capitulated. And so I guess we're just going to let all that happen. Peru took one state from Panama. So there you go, Peru, kind of moving up the line a little bit here now. It looks like they're thinking about Costa Rica next. I've been to Costa Rica. It's a beautiful country. Please treat it nicely. He wants 1944 subhulls. He's going to give me 15 factories for all of that. Yes, please. You know, we're just going to keep declining all of these call to arms that we're getting. Okay, the United States has dismantled their faction. So that leaves just the Axis and Comintern as the available factions in the game. So let's take a look at that. You can see Axis is basically all of uh, Europe except for what is owned by the Soviet Union. We've got some chunks of Africa. Uh, we've got the northwest of South America, but you see a little bit of Comintern there. And then the U.S. and Great Britain as free agents at the moment. Peru wants our help with the war effort against... Okay, so now it's Costa Rica, Mexico, Nicaragua, Nationalist South Africa. You know, yeah, I'm not declaring war on the U.S. So Beep continues his march up through Central America. He's now taking Costa Rica. So that's going to... It's going to end that. Let's see where those wars are now. It's just Mexico, Nicaragua, Nationalist South Africa. Well, Beep continues his march up through Central America. It's now Nicaragua uh, that has capitulated. So he will be as far as the border with El Salvador and then Guatemala. And then that will get him at Mexico. And it will be interesting to see what happens then. Well then, Great Britain has declared war on Communist China, so that tells me that he's definitely kind of full in with uh, with the commies at this point. Luxembourg cancels their lend lease. I'm just trying to get my air power all caught up on things. Let's look at our naval doctrine.
So that's kind of where that's at now. Let's take a look at that war. China has joined National South Africa as our enemy in the Norwegian South African War. Well, that's interesting. There's our anti Soviet pact. So now, if anybody who was a part of the anti Soviet pact gets attacked, the rest of us will be automatically pulled into that war. Not how I thought it would go. I really wanted to go this route and go with a full alliance with the USSR, but he just didn't go for it. So that's where we're at. Um, what else can we do now? I think we're going to focus on our navy, I guess. Let's get this synthetic rubber going. And then we'll worry about the Navy. So there's a new faction. It's the you, the Chinese United Front. Looks like Brazil just took care of um, things there. The Brazil Socialist Republic. So they are fully communist. Interesting. I thought they were going to talk about going fascist, but I guess not. Uh, Chinese United Front. You can see South Africa, Mexico and good bits of China. All the various factions in China are now a part of that. So that's where the war focus is gonna be for now. You got the Soviets coming in this way. You got the Japanese coming in this way. And we're kind of staying out of all of that right now. Random Brits trying to get into the comm intern, which we're not surprised by at all. That's the only thing he could do to protect himself. Well, Random Brit, uh, who controls Great Britain, just applied to join the Axis, which I was not expecting because I thought he just said he was going comm intern. So I posed it to the other faction members, and the agreement was absolutely not. Uh, it doesn't mean we're going to attack him, but we're absolutely not going to allow him into our faction. So that's where that's at. It does concern me a little bit that he's kind of on one side of me, and it, it makes it a two-front war, but... Uh, Edward VIII announced today that Great Britain has reached out to form a new alliance. I guess we have no choice. I uh, have made their public intent to cooperate in case of war. Interesting. So here's the situation now. Uh, it looks like... Japan's about to take Nanking, and he said it's going to be different this time. He's not going to do bad things, so we're all glad for that. Um, but he's also moving in from the north. You can see that there from Manchuko. So, so far, so good as far as Japan's war in China goes. And it's basically going to become kind of this proxy war where Japan's coming in from one side. Soviets are coming in from the other side. Uh, Japan's also coming up from Indochina. Uh, what we would call Vietnam today, and he's moving in this direction. I don't know what the UK is doing in all of that, but we know he's supposed to be a part of that as well. It's late November 1941. I'm feeling pretty good now about how well I'm being able to ramp up my divisions. I've currently got 10 divisions in production at any given time. Uh, so we're also up to 4.22 million in manpower. We've got a million in fielded manpower. So I might be able to ramp that up even more. I'm really only limited by my production at the moment which let's take a look and see where we're at we've actually got 64,000 in surplus military or infantry equipment so we could probably ramp up the infantry divisions even more than we currently are well now we're getting a request to join our faction from Brazil so I'm going to put that to the faction as well We'll see what they have to say about it. Well, the faction's pretty torn on whether or not we should accept. The concern is that as a communist nation, he's kind of just positioning himself to kind of be a snitch and to tell Grumble what's going on. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say no, just because I have that same concern that he's just trying to find out what's going on in our nation and would allow grumble to know from the inside exactly where our weak and strong points are. So uh, Great Britain just once again dismantled their faction because he knows that his time is short. Italy is now 
ramping up for war against the the British. He just started the process of declaring. So that's coming soon, and that's why the Brits decided to try and join the Axis once again. So we keep getting requests from both the British and the Brazilians to join our faction. And of course, we're not allowing either one of them. I think we're pretty strong uh, to where we can stand without them, especially as you can see how many units I'm currently producing all at once. Uh, I'm really ramping up the size of my army. I've got a million in a field. Uh, I've got 135,000 in training. I've got a lot of Navy and air production going at the same time. So I'm feeling pretty good about our chances. So I'm just going to go ahead and queue up my Panzer divisions to land down here at Portsmouth. Uh, and we're going to start getting our Navy into position to help maintain naval supremacy in that area. We'll also get some air power over there. I'm not going to send anything more than my Panzers. My Panzers I view as my attack force, whereas all of the infantry that I'm spamming uh, is for defense. I'm not going to send any of my infantry to Brits, but I'm definitely going to send Panzers to help out if I can. Okay, here we go. D Italy just declared war on Great Britain. I'm not quite ready to assist yet, but I mean, that's kind of where we are at the moment. So we'll see what happens here. But I'm going to try to start queuing up everything. See how the Navy is doing. So far, so good. Okay, the United States just declared war on Great Britain, so it's all going down now. Italy and, and the U.S. so far against Britain. I haven't been called into that war, uh, so I'm not a part of it yet, but I am prepared to go after him. And just Grumblebee continues to sit there, not really doing a whole lot. He's actually barely fighting against Communist China now, which makes me wonder what the rest of his units are doing or preparing for. But the longer we can stay out of war against the Soviets, the better. Italy just says he always wanted to see the pyramids. <laughs> so mainly that's where the war is going right now, is Italy is fighting Great Britain in Africa. Of course, I could go against the British here. Is Wales independent now? And what's going on here? He just made Wales and Northern Ireland independent. The U.S. just declared war in imperialist Canada. He just freed Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. So now it's just England and Ireland. Interesting. Not sure what's going on there. So because he's, I think what, what's happening here is he's releasing these countries so that in the event that we invade Britain, we can't take those places. Um, so a bit of a childish move, kind of a I'm taking my ball and going home type of thing. Oh, and now he just did it with Ireland too. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and declare on him just to punish him for his behavior. Um, not a lot of territory to take now since he just released everybody else, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland, um, and Wales. And now Graham Borg saying, please take Canada. He, he controls imperialist Canada at this point. The U.S. is invading him. I just got to keep one eye on what the Soviets are doing over here just in case. But I don't really see anybody on the border at the moment. I don't know if that just means he doesn't have anybody and they're all over here or what. Okay, our justification for East Anglia is complete. So we're going to go ahead and declare on the Brits. And I'll call the Allies to help. Here we go. Free Ireland wants a non-aggression pact. Sure, why not? That's fine. Japan doesn't... I don't need Japan to join it right now. Totally understand that. Let's go ahead and see if we can land over there. We do have naval supremacy. So I guess I probably should have waited to um, 
declare the war until my naval invasion was ready. I've still got 35 days to go on the naval invasion before it's ready, so that's going to give him time to prepare. But that's all we can do for now. So in the meantime, the U.S. is nearly done with the invasion of Canada. It looks like he's taken most of their key territory. Remember, in Canada, almost all of the population lives close to the U.S. border. Uh, so there's not a lot of strong points or victory areas to gain once you get too far into Canada. They're all pretty close to the south. And that's kind of what's happening here. Um, I don't know what in the world's going on over here with France. And I don't know why we keep dropping to a pause. Things are going pretty slow at the moment. Uh, we are now 28 days away from being able to invade the UK. The good news is we continue to have... I'll oh, see now he's going to have time to start building up his supremacy here. And that's going to make it a little harder. So we're going to have to get some, some more naval presence in the area. Okay, Imperialist Canada has capitulated. We're going to start putting some radar on the border with the USSR so we can see what's going on a little further back. Uh, the speculation is that the reason that we don't see more of his forces on the border, in fact, we very, see very little, uh, is that he's probably back defending on this river, which is a good defensive point to have. And that's probably what's happening there. All right, so you can see that Italy has taken most of Africa now. So he's definitely winning the war against the, the Brits there. Not entirely sure what's going on here. It looks like Manchuko and Japan are kind of splitting the territory that they've conquered. Uh, but they're pushing well against China. I'm working on some radar so I can see a little further into Soviet territory as far as what's going on. And we are now just three days away from being able to launch our invasion of the UK where I continue to have naval supremacy in the English Channel, so I'll be able to do that uh, when the time comes. We've got 82% naval supremacy. I'd actually like to get that a little higher before I launch the invasion. Well, it looks like he's trying to merge his entire fleet into one. 71 destroyers, 14 light cruisers, 7 battleships, 3 battle cruisers, uh, a couple of aircraft carriers, and 24 naval bombers. They sank 5 of my subs, a cruiser, two destroyers, but nothing of any major concern because we continue to hold naval supremacy in the region, which is all that really matters as we prepare the invasion to take place, which should be happening right now. Here they go. It's going to take a little while, but they're getting in there. And then what I'm going to do is, once I take Portsmouth, I'll send this entire Western force. Or at least we'll send the other... Um, I don't think we'll send the infantry. We'll go ahead and send the other Panzers, though. So then we can start to break out. Come on, baby. Let's get landed. They're almost there. Just trying to fight off his navy in the process, but we're good. We're almost in Portsmouth. Oh, so long it takes. Then we've got to quickly break out. So we can have uh, no supply issues. Good night. This is taking forever. Okay, there it is. We've made our landing. So now what we need to do is we need to start breaking out. We're going to go for London. We're going to get our other divisions over there as soon as we can. And we'll have them break for Birmingham. Let's try to get a... Uh, some kind of a front line built here. The fall of London. There it is. 
We'll do the same with these guys. We'll just draw a front line. Push the offensive line forward. And then we'll deal with all of that as it happens. Non aggression pact with Cayenne. I don't even know where they are. Is that where they grow the peppers? So I'm doing all of this with just my 22 Panzer divisions. Nobody else is involved. I'm keeping all of my infantry on the mainland to defend uh, on both ends. And that's the way it's going to stay. I don't need anything more than the Panzer divisions. I think I've got plenty to deal with the Brits. Let's see if we can destroy these units in D Dover. Uh, maybe not. Probably wasn't the wisest thing to go after his seven divisions there, especially when I can just keep them contained and go elsewhere. So we'll just continue to break out as best we can. We've lost 4,000 men so far. Not a huge deal. Air power is kind of a mixed bag. I haven't quite been able to establish air supremacy. I'm trying to. See if maybe we can bump our limit on these units and reinforce them a little more. See if that helps. Because I think I've got the additional forces available to reinforce them. Once we take Birmingham, go down here, take Cornwall, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. I'm just going to send a couple of divisions down there because I don't think he has much defending on this side. So there aren't that many. Oh, Liverpool. We'll have to take Liverpool. Since he doesn't have any of the rest of this, it's not going to take much to be able to take England out of the war. They canceled their non-aggression pact. Finland did. All right, that concerns me. Oh, he gave him back Norway. Of course he did. So that concerns me that they're gearing up for war, which is quite possible while I'm distracted, at least while he thinks I'm distracted. I've got plenty of units to defend the homeland. All right, so we've taken Portsmouth. We've taken Birmingham. Let's go ahead up and take Liverpool and Manchester. Let's take a look and see where he's at now. In terms of surrender, 63% toward capitulation. Just going to deal with this right here so we can finish it. Hungary demands Slovakia. No, Hungary, I'm not giving you Slovakia. They get nothing. Hungary wouldn't be so stupid as to declare war on me. We're just going to keep him bottled up in Dover while we take everything else. Let's take Norwich. German Reich rejects Hungarian demands. We've got Romania down there. They can kind of deal with them if necessary. All right, Manchester, Leeds, Sheffield. Who, where's the capital now? Does he even have a capital? Probably Dover. Yep. It's all right. I don't think I need Dover to win. If I do, I'll send everything down there and deal with it. Let's see where we're at now. It's 85% toward capitulation. I'm going to send some divisions this way to help out. Alright, I think we've just got just about got England now. We're at 99%. So as soon as we take one more bit of territory from him, Maybe Hull? Let's go for Hull and Newcastle. Between those two, that ought to do the trick. And England will be ours, and that'll probably be a good place to stop this episode, because we've only got about five more minutes of gameplay today. There it is. Alright, Kingdom of England is out. They've capitulated. So now it's time to gobble up what we can. We'll see how that all plays out. So where we're at is that uh, I've taken Southwest England, but I'm going to give it to the U.S. 
I took Yorkshire and Lancashire because I want the steel production, uh, and then I'm puppeting the rest of England. Uh, Italy took a good chunk of Africa, but not all of it. There's a little bit in the West he didn't deal with, and now the U.S. is gobbling up some territory in the Caribbean. And then we should be pretty well done with what we're doing, and therefore with this episode. But we'll see. Okay, our peace conference is done. And now we've immediately got to go into another one, apparently. This one for Imperialist Canada. So you can see what the situation looks like now. England is uh, just this territory here. U.S. is going to gobble up all of Canada and be done with that because he's the only one involved in that war. Uh, we're going to give Southwest England to the U.S. as soon as we get the chance to. And that'll be how we wrap up this episode. So you can see that basically now it all comes down to a war between the Axis and the Comintern. That's going to how, be how we decide all this. So let us know what you think. Use the comment section below. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of discussion, a lot of backroom dealing going on. Some folks who got knocked out are probably going to want to come back in as other nations. We will see how that all shakes out next week. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button. We'll see you again soon.